There's another tool in the tool chest that's coming, okay, and that's bempedoic acid. Yes, let's and, talk uh, a little about so that. So the PDUFA date for bempedoic acid is February something or other next year, early next year. And bempedoic acid is an ATP citrate lyase inhibitor. It works upstream of the enzyme affected by statins, HMG-CoA reductase. It lowers LDL modestly uh, in the statin intolerant patients around 25%. It can be combined with azetamide to get over 40% LDL lowering, in one study 48% without giving a statin. And for the statin intolerant patient, and you know, we can argue to we're blue in the face you know, Rory Collins thinks it doesn't exist, statin intolerance. I'm going to tell you that it does. I think our primary care audience will say it definitely <laughs> exists. And I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to say more than I've ever said publicly, but I'm going to tell you that I have taken statins for years. And about a year ago, I started getting proximal muscle pain. And so I switched statins, went to low doses, got it back. Every three, four days after I started, weakness and pain without CK elevations. I've tried five different statins, and I can, and the symptoms are, re I don't know why. Could you take it once or twice a week or three times a week? So I'm now week? on twice a week, low dose resuvastatin. It's all I can tolerate. Anybody tells you, I mean, okay, it's one off, it's an anecdote, okay? But it's good when you have to be a patient, that you learn as we, we have that it, is, it exists. Now, bempedoic acid is not as powerful as PCS can inhibitor, it's pretty good when combined with azetamide. Uh, we have a fully enrolled 14,000 patient outcome trial that we're running uh, that we'll report in a few years about whether it lowers uh, risk or not. And you're looking at some statin intolerant patients in that population, We're looking right? at exclusively yeah. statin intolerant patients. And by the way, this drug also lowers CRP by as much or more than statins do. And as Paul Ritker and I have both published, there appears to be incremental benefits in statins of getting more CRP reduction. And pretty, so- Pretty glycemic friendly too, from what it I, does, I see. It does lower HbA1c a bit. And so it's hitting on a lot, of, a lot of factors that are involved here. And it's good to have another tool in the tool chest. And it doesn't seem to get into the muscle cell the way statins do, correct? It's a prodrug. Right. The conversion happens, so the, the conversion to the active drug into the liver. And, it, but, and the nice thing, Steve, as you point out, is that the uh, approval will be as a mono or as a combination in one tablet. Because that, that, that would be convenient for patients is to be able to have a non-statin that gives about a 40% reduction. Uh, that's a nice option, as you said. It's, 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 it's not going to replace statins. Uh, it's, not, it's not a PCSK9 inhibitor but it's another option uh, for patients, which we need, because obviously we have lots of people we're not getting to goals. And you know, well, well Steve, let the, me ask yeah. you about that, because you've been a proponent for a long time of cardiovascular outcome trials, indeed you're doing one with bempedoic acid. If the drug is approved and available, should it be used before the outcome trial comes out? You know, patient sits across the table from me and looks me in the eye and said, I've tried every statin. I can't tolerate them. They have a high LDL. They're on azetamide. You know, we, you know, you want to give them. You can, we can give them cholestyramine. <laughs> you know, uh, we can try niacin, but the results are not very good. I don't have a problem in a patient that's got a very high LDL. I will tell them we don't have outcome data. Uh, we didn't have outcome data for years with azetamide, and yet we used it. Or statins. Or statins even, and so. You know, the LDL is used by the FDA as a, quote, validated surrogate, and I think that's why the FDA is willing to approve it. So I will use it. I will use it even more if it shows a good event reduction, for sure. But I think for the people at this table who generally run lipid clinics, with seven to Deepak, and you probably see plenty of these people, um, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, how many people, Christy, Mike, Jamie, do you see on a weekly basis that come in that have symptoms of statin intolerance. And even if it's not a real disorder, even if you agree with the Oxford people that it's not, the patients won't take a statin. We need to give them an alternative. If, there are, if it's a patient that meets the criteria for a PCSK9 inhibitor, 
uh, what would you do in that circumstance where there's now great outcome data with two different PCSK9 inhibitors, but you know, some patients don't like to inject themselves. Some are fine with it, as yeah. you pointed Look, out. Look, we need don't. multiple opportunities, multiple ways of treating patients. I do use PCSK9 inhibitors in statin intolerant patients. I studied this in a trial called Gauss-3 uh, that showed that they were very well tolerated. It also showed that statin intolerance is a real phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Not in everybody, but in some of the patients. So we have data. Um, uh, but there will be people in whom either you can't justify a PCSK9 inhibitor, or maybe they would do fine with a more modest amount of LDL reduction, uh, particularly in combination with azetamibe. And so I'll use both. I'll use both strategies.